forgiveness is a good thing, but forgiving betrayal is always a mistake. Everywhere was filled with joy at the wedding of Sophia and Cooper. She was the princess of the kingdom of the sea, never in love and only wanting to find a deserving person. And he was a talented prince, incredibly wealthy, sweet and polite. Does anybody object to this marriage? I object! Things took a turn for the worse when Sophia's rival, the Princess of the Green Forest, appeared. How dare you ruin my happiness, Grace? Today should have been my wedding, and Cooper should have been the groom! <laughs> oh, my naive little girls! He had given them love, which made them willing to enter into marriage. They dreamed of a complete love, only to receive unforgettable humiliation. You wretch! Were you the one spreading rumors to bring me here? The overflowing emotions of passionate love and the pain of betrayal caused the two girls to react strongly. Why cry? Without me, there would be someone else. Because he was a deceitful prince, skilled at seduction and stealing the hearts of unsuspecting princesses. Subscribe to Woe Fairy Tale to follow the story. Avery worked as a server in a luxurious tavern. With her simple appearance and cold, indifferent nature, she seemed invisible to everyone. As she grew older, she became more indifferent binding herself to a boring serving job. The tavern had a regular guest, Prince Cooper. Every month, he would bring a different princess to the tavern for a date. Avery despised Cooper because he reminded her of her father. Her father had abandoned her and her mother for another woman. Since then, she had lost faith in love and withdrawn into a dull life. Due to her deep hatred, Avery had tried many times to expose Cooper, but failed. But perhaps luck would come her way this time. Do you know what he said to me? Without you, life has no meaning anymore. So, so marry, marry me instead! instead. Oh, oh heavens, heavens, that wretched man! Avery joined them and revealed Cooper's previous deceitful actions. <gasps> this is too much! We need someone who can make him suffer and experience the feeling of huh? betrayal. But who? Huh? He has charmed huh? almost every princess in the world. Huh? Mm, not every princess yet. Although Cooper had visited the tavern many times, he had never noticed Avery. <laughs> to him, she was just a commoner, invisible. <laughs> they would transform her into the <laughs> ideal girlfriend and teach him a lesson. <laughs> <laughs> For someone accustomed to getting everything he wants, Cooper will be impressed by an arrogant princess. Mysterious and acting submissive at the right moment. Remember! <laughs> the first encounter with Cooper happened at the tavern again. Sophia and Grace secretly gave Cooper a mysterious drink that made him behave foolishly. Do you know... <laughs> You're so attractive. <laughs> You're insane. What is this? Wait a minute. Huh? <laughs> According to the plan, this was when Avery appeared, leaving Cooper stunned with just one glance. <gasps> huh? following days, Cooper sought to meet Avery continuously. Avery maintained an unpredictable attitude towards Cooper. Sometimes friendly and open, sometimes cold and icy, confusing him. He was going crazy because he had never made so much effort before. Come on, Avery! When will you agree to go on a date with me? You? Hmm. I don't know what's true anymore. 
What do I have to do to prove my sincerity? I really mean it! Huh? Suddenly, a thief <gasps> appeared, and Cooper immediately stood up to protect Avery. Avery huh? pretended to be moved and accepted his 100th mm. confession of love. Mm. The plan was on its way to perfect success. Mm. <laughs> Avery and her accomplices <laughs> laughed at Cooper's <laughs> foolishness. However, huh? things were not as easy as she thought. Cooper was overly sweet and genuinely caring. He actively <laughs> learned about her interests and tenderly took care of her huh? step by step. <laughs> they spent many nights talking to each other. <laughs> Avery kept reminding herself that it huh? was all just a play, and he was still a villain. Huh? Remember his true nature. Wake up! On an unsuspecting night... <laughs> Be careful, Avery! Oh no, Cooper! Avery caught him and helped treat his wounds. In this touching moment, a marriage proposal was just around the corner. Huh? Avery had prepared herself for a cheesy line he would say to countless other girls. But... Avery, I know I'm terrible. Huh? But for you, I will change. I want to be worthy of being by your side. Huh? Come on, let me show you this. Since childhood, I had been seriously ill and at risk of dying early. My mother made a deal with a demon to give me her remaining years in exchange for her revival. I couldn't bear it. Then sold my soul to the demon with the deal for my mother's revival. I swore to open the gates and bring the demon to the mortal world using the broken hearts of the princesses as the main ingredient. Huh? I already have enough ingredients to complete the gateway, but I've decided not to open it anymore. Because now I love huh? you! I want to live a redeemed life by your side forever! Huh? Hmm? Are these words true? Avery began to feel conflicted about her revenge plan and perhaps had developed some feelings for Cooper. She shared everything with Sophia and Grace. <laughs> Fantastic! This is evidence to put him in jail. <laughs> and we'll attend his wedding wearing bridal gowns. <laughs> Cooper and Avery's wedding was splendid. The promiscuous prince finally found his life's destination. Mm. Sophia and Grace secretly blended into the wedding to witness the perfect ending of their play. <laughs> Thank you for giving me the chance to change. Please let me love you for the rest of my life. Avery became more and more confused. Huh? If she continued to deceive him at this moment, she wouldn't be any better than him. She grated her teeth and huh? finally revealed the truth that everything was part of a revenge plan by the betrayed brides. Huh? Betrayed brides? Ah! Huh? You will repent in prison! Huh? Ironically, fate huh? punished Cooper severely. The one he loved huh? couldn't be with him, and she made him taste extreme agony. Why cry? <laughs> Suddenly, the demon crashed the wedding and unleashed his fury. It turned out that one of the demon's minions had secretly observed Cooper, and knew that he had abandoned his plan to open the gates of hell. Therefore, the minion brought the gateway to the wedding and completed it. The demon decided to punish Cooper. Grace and Sophia called upon mystical creatures from the ocean and the forest to join the battle. However, the darkened Cooper was too powerful and they couldn't defeat him. Seeing the image of a corrupted Cooper in agony, Avery realized that she had indeed <gasps> developed feelings for him. I believe in you. Don't lose yourself. 
This made him recall the moment when his mother passed away. How do you want me to become? <coughs> become whoever you want, as long as you live with integrity and treat others kindly. That will always make me proud of you. Don't lose yourself, my child. <laughs> At this moment, Cooper saw his mother's image in Avery. <sighs> A sinful person like you deserves to go to hell with me. No, Cooper! <laughs> But Cooper chose to atone for his mistakes. The shards of broken hearts <laughs> scattered and returned to the deceived brides. Huh? There was one piece huh? of a heart that he had given to the one he loved. After everything, Avery lived a positive and open life, <laughs> ready to embrace love. Occasionally, she would remember Cooper and remind herself that true <laughs> kindness could transform everything. She always had the choice to live a righteous life. Owning a pair of magical shoes that can do anything you want has always been a dream of many people. <laughs> Among them, there is Princess Julia, a beautiful girl who is pursued by many boys and has the best dancing talent in the kingdom. Julia, however, was arrogant and unruly and liked her freedom because she was the king's only daughter. She was always ready to cause trouble, criticize other dancers, and even make them dance until they pleased her before they could live comfortably in the palace. When Julia reached the age to get married, the king introduced her to many young men, but she refused them all, <laughs> saying that she only liked to dance. Huh? However, he worried about her future happiness without him, and therefore, he was determined to find her a suitable husband. Upon seeing her father's determination, Julia reluctantly proposed a plan that she thought was impossible for anyone to accomplish. Huh? So I have to wish that I want to marry someone with enough huh? kind heart, enough talent, as well as bring me a pair of luxurious dancing shoes, go wherever I want for a moment, light as feathers, dance forever without breaking down to show my sincerity. <laughs> because he doted on his daughter, the king also agreed with Julia's plan and sent word of the requirements and ceremony for proposing to the princess. However, although there are many people who bring shoes made of crystal and silk, are not in line with the standards she set. As if no one could fulfill this request, a nomadic boy came to her and asked her to marry him. I am Hawk, a man who lives in a distant prairie. These rainbow shoes were personally woven by me from the feathers of rare mythical birds. They allow you to walk or even fly to any place in the blink of an eye, and will never wear out no matter how much you dance. Julia did not believe such shoes existed, but as a rule, she had to try them on. Just like Hawk had said, these shoes could do anything Julia had dreamed of. <laughs> While Julia still could not believe this fact, the king greeted his son-in-law cheerfully and wanted to see his face. However, all were stunned by his disembodied face. But the king's words could not be retracted simply because of the appearance of others, so he still gave Julia and Hawk a marriage settlement. I can't marry an animal like him! He doesn't deserve my beauty in this kingdom! But Julia, he's the only one who has the talent to make you rainbow shoes and fulfill all your requirements. I just don't want to- Julia, mm. although I understand you don't like his looks, you can't refuse to marry him for that reason. Therefore, I love you very much, but we need to know how to keep our word with what we have declared before. However, Julia was still unable to accept the marriage and tried to delay it. Ahaha! These rainbow shoes can fly and take me anywhere, so it can help me escape just like no one else can catch me! <laughs> Thinking so, Julia then ran away into the sky to hide from her wedding. However, Julia found herself struggling to find food. <laughs> and befriending clouds only added to her misery. Eventually, she became wary and started longing for her palace, which she had left behind. Plus, Julia had no idea that while she slept, the sun was slowly burning her shoes. 
with no more rainbow shoes, Julia lost her magic and fell out of the clouds. Fortunately, she was saved by a shadow when she fell into the deep sea. When she woke up, she was terrified because she didn't know where she was. She looked down and saw that her feet were injured and she couldn't walk as easily as before. Huh? Julia, don't move too much because your legs are... Huh? Keep distance! It's all because of your shoes that I came up with this. But why am I in your place? A few days before the news came that you had run away with the rainbow shoes, hmm. the king was very worried and huh? very ill. So I promised the king that I would look for you every day in the sky. because I understood that the material of the shoes could not withstand the sunlight for very long. When I saw a light falling from the sky, I realized it was you and came to rescue. Julia understood that Hawk had saved her life, but because of her arrogant nature, she still denied it. Even so, don't think that's why I will accept you as my husband. Now take me to the palace. My father must be worried about me, or... Make me some rainbow shoes so I can go back there myself. You don't have to worry about this because... I don't like forced marriages either. But you don't want a husband who has talent and heart, so... I'll prove it to you more for you to accept. Besides, huh? there's a snowstorm outside. Huh? So stay here for a while and heal yourself. Huh? If you want another pair of shoes, huh? I will make them for you after the snowstorm huh? is over. Right now, the mythical birds have flown away to avoid huh? the cold. So I don't have the materials to make shoes. Therefore, uh -huh. please stay here and rest until you recover. Uh -huh. huh? This guy? Was he treated so badly by me and still worried uh -huh. about me? But though he is ugly on the outside and honest on the uh -huh. inside, I don't want to be bound to this marriage with a beast man like him. Besides, since my father is sick, I want to see him as soon as possible. Uh -huh. Julia pretended to agree. <laughs> But in the middle of the night, she slipped away again. But, as Hawk had said, it was a heavy snowstorm, and Julia could not easily return to the palace. Huh? Uh -huh. Hey! When she huh? tried to catch the carriage, they refused to give her a ride because they saw her dirty, pathetic appearance. So she still walked in the middle of the storm, and inadvertently made the wound on her leg worse. Julia! Hawk's voice? Huh? Julia saw Hawk rushing huh? to her place and quickly gave her his shoes to keep warm. Huh? 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 Julia felt huh? touched by the kindness of Hawk, causing her to tremble a little. Hmm. Hawk, are you angry that I left of my own accord? No. Since I understand that you are worried about your father, then I must go back to the palace at this time. Then, why would you want to marry a stubborn, unfulfilled woman like me as your wife? I used to be a very stubborn person, who only knew how to win or lose. However, in the end, I didn't have anyone who truly loved me. They only respected me because of my name, my position, or my appearance. After I realized this, I changed gradually and want to help people have a happier, more comfortable life. Huh? Hmm. Huh? Hmm. Because in mm. fact, everyone has some flaws, mistakes in their lives, like you or me. But instead of arguing, being stubborn, mm. we should know how to forgive each other and use our kind heart to empathize with them. That's when we truly mature and become free. Mm. So it turns out, after all this, I understand that stubbornness will only bring more trouble. I think I should start revising my own personality. Hmm. Thank you. Well, seeing how much you long for mm -hmm. the palace, we have to overcome this storm. Huh? Mm -hmm. By the time they reached the palace, the dancers who had been mocked by her had mm -hmm. deliberately taken the opportunity of her being wounded and challenged her to a dance. 
If she won, they would allow her to meet the king. Huh? Huh? Julia's leg is injured, so I'll take your challenge for her. <laughs> Afterwards, huh? Hawk ignored the surrounding laughter and danced to the music, but Julia quickly joined in huh? his dance moves. <laughs> huh? Julia, your feet are still th Don't worry! Even though I was injured, I still believe that my dancing ability could defeat her. Besides, I don't want you to always be the one to suffer, so if you want to help, let's dance! Hawk saw the determination in Julia's eyes, so he agreed and danced to the music with her. <laughs> Not only that, but when Hawk was tired and exhausted, Julia was there to cheer him up, just as he had taken care of Julia before. Gradually, through the melodious dance, the two people gradually understood more about the feelings for each other. Meanwhile, the other girl's shoes break down and cause her to stumble. <laughs> Seeing that scene, Julia suddenly remembered the important things Hawk had shared with her and how to inspire people with her heart. So, Julia took off her shoe and handed it to the girl. Why? Does the princess not only celebrate the victory, but also give me these shoes? Someone told me that, instead of always fighting each other, we should use our kind hearts to make them our friends. Huh? Besides, I understand that for those of us who like to dance, these legs are precious. So I want to challenge you once again when we're both prepared for the best. <sighs> Princess, I don't know what happened to you in the past, but thank you very much for your kindness. Not at all. It's all because of my fiancé, Hawk. Hmm. Suddenly, the light of dawn fell on Julia and huh? turned into a pair of rainbow shoes for her. This miracle <laughs> occurred at the very moment when Julia learned to give something worthy was given to her. And these shoes mark the princess's growth <laughs> as a more thoughtful person. <laughs> Julia was delighted and went with Hawk to visit the king and tell him stories of her experiences with him. <laughs> Julia eventually opened up, shared more with Hawk, and finally, <laughs> they had a true love, happily ever after. <laughs> The snowflakes were falling. It signaled a cold winter, which is about to come. Other creatures were preparing for a long winter sleep. After hard working days, the flower fairies finally went back to flower land to enjoy their winter holiday. Finally, we could relax for a while. The more important thing is that we will be able to greet Mr. Santa Claus. Come on, that day is a long way off. Just relax first. No, I'm afraid that if we don't prepare it carefully, Mr. Santa will not be able to find Flowerland. Let her do it. Mm. Nobody can present her now. <laughs> Annually, Santa Claus would bring the presents for the flower fairies as thanks for the things they had done over the year. Because Flowerland is located in an isolated place, which was really difficult to find, so they had to arrange the huh? signal lights as the instruction for Santa Claus to find. As usual, Akina was always the one who took the responsibility of arranging the signal lights. Finally, the day that Santa Claus visited Flowerland was about to come, and everything was ready. Everyone was really eager to await for the next day. Except for a house in a corner of Flower Land. It was still quiet. However, in the next morning, no one knew why everything became so chaotic. For sure, she's the one who did it! Huh? Thinking so, Akina immediately went to find that fairy to talk about it. <laughs> What's that? Venus, why did you ruin all the efforts of everyone? I don't know what you want. Quit, you act! You're the one who sabotaged the signal lights to make Santa Claus not be able to find Flowerland. Do you have any evidence to prove that I'm the one who did it? Because you're the only one who hates Christmas here! 
<laughs> Akina, we shouldn't suspect others when we didn't have a clear evidences. Now together we should prepare everything again to timely welcome Santa Claus this evening and we'll make it clear later. <laughs> I will definitely find the evidences to make you apologize for this. <laughs> then that <laughs> night, when everyone was trying to prepare the things, <laughs> Akira secretly snuck into Venice's house. <laughs> person who hate Christmas that much? It's weird when she has those things. Mm. Ah. <gasps> Indeed, she's the one who ruined everything. What are you doing in my house? Do you want to refuse anymore? You not only ruined everything, but also stole those Christmas stuffs. I don't steal anything. So how do you explain for those stuffs? I... I'll tell the chief of the fairies, then see how will you be able to refuse it? <gasps> no! When flying <laughs> near the landing track of Santa Claus, huh? Venus supposedly caught Akina, making both of them lose balance, then fell down. The stuff also came off to the middle of the track. At that very moment, the sleigh was about to land. Tripping on that stuff made the sleigh lose its track and get an accident. Oh no, Mr. Santa! Akina, Venus, what are you doing? Chief, I... I found out the evidence to prove that Venus was the one who ruined everything. Didn't I say that we should make it clear later? You all just looked huh? up what you did. <laughs> if Mr. Santa won't be able to hand the gifts, it means both of you ruined Christmas. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, Chief. I'm sorry, Santa. So, now what do we have to do? <laughs> it's okay. It's not too late now. <laughs> if you all can help me fix huh? the sleigh and collect the presents, huh? I can still make it. Everything was finally ready for Santa Claus to set out. However, his injury was really serious. It's not okay. The injury is more serious than I expected. I'm afraid that I won't be able to get through the chimney. Akina, Venus, you should follow to help Mr. Santa. But... If you can help Mr. Santa complete the work, I won't give you any punishment for the things happened today. Yes, Chief? Then, the two fairies followed Santa Claus to hand the presents for the humans. I should have had a peaceful winter holiday. Who is to blame? If you didn't sabotage, the thing would never happen like that. <laughs> Come on, girls! It's time to do our work! While Santa is reading the list of the children who would be able to receive the presents, the two fairies had the mission to send those presents to the house by its chimney. At first, this work was so hard that made it really difficult for them to do it. However, after a few times, they could combine well with each other. After the last kid could receive the present, the sun was also shining. Venus suddenly realized that there were still two presents in the bag. 
Oh no, hmm? there are still two presents hmm. left. We didn't make it. Hmm. No, they are the presents for the two of you. <laughs> I also have a present. Of course, I have been bringing you a present every year. <laughs> but for years, I haven't received any present. So I thought that you forgot me. Hmm. It's really weird. So that's why you hated Christmas. And all those dusted Christmas stuffs really belong to you? I'm really sorry for suspecting you. I'm also sorry for breaking all of your signal lights because I was so jealous with you who could receive the present. But I hadn't had that things, so I didn't want Mr. Santa to come here. Everything is over. The important thing now is that you could receive your present. Quickly open to see what it is. Mm. Mm. <laughs> wow, it's the cake that I always wanted to try at one time in my life. It is made by the most talented <laughs> goblin chefs of Santa Claus. <laughs> My chefs also used a special formula, making the wrapping paper edible. <laughs> really? Hmm? Hmm. Wonderful! It's exactly the flavor I could feel in my dreams. <laughs> Stop! You said that you had eaten it in your dreams? <laughs> yes, every Christmas, I have been dreaming of tasting this delicious flavor. Hmm. Could it be? Tina took out the wrapping paper that she had collected in Venice's room to compare. Indeed, the two kinds of wrapping paper were the same. Venus, I understood why you hadn't been able to receive the present. Because you ate it while you were sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> ho, 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 ho. Ho, ho, ho. Huh? So I thought it's because I was not as beautiful as other flowers. So I hadn't been able to receive the present. I even see your appearance really special. Don't be too timid. <laughs> yes, I get it. Thank you so much, Mr. Santa. <laughs> then, that year, everyone had a joyful and Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Oh, Merry oh. Christmas! <laughs>once upon a time there lived a mysterious land where the people was blessed by the gods with a pair of wings helping them to fly freely in the sky those wings were their standard of beauty and the one who owned the most beautiful wings was no one else but princess anita no one could resist the beauty from those wings there were so many proposals from the most handsome and powerful man in the kingdom, but she still didn't care anything about them. At that time, there lived a man named Cain who delivered food for the palace. No exceptions, he fell in love with Anita. But not for her wings, he just fell in love with her benevolence. There was also another guy who fell in love with Anita's wings, named Duncan, the one who had been expelled for practicing dark magic. Annually, there would be a traditional festival in the kingdom, and as usual, Anita would be the one who opened the ceremony. Taking advantage of that moment, Duncan created chaos. Then he could easily take Anita away. He brought Anita to his hideaway. That was the highest mountain in the area, where the steep cliff located with the strong winds, which were ready to tear any wings up. Only Duncan could fly there because he had practiced dark magic. Being afraid of the rough terrain, no one dared to go there to save her, even the ones who had fallen in love with her before. Only Cain disregarded all the dangers to go there and save Anita.
because his wings weren't strong enough to cross the ferocious winds, so he had to climb up to the top of the mountain. Although it was too difficult, but he would never stop. After many days of perseverance, he could finally reach the top of the mountain, where Anita was detained. Without spending the time to rest, he went to find the princess immediately. Hmm? <laughs> this time, I will never let you run away. <laughs> Why do you never let me go? <laughs> of course, it's because I love you, my little princess. <clears throat> you only love those wings! <laughs> Whatever. Basically, from now on, you will be only mine. I will go prepare gifts to marry you. Just wait for me here. <laughs> Waiting for Duncan to leave, Kane immediately rushed there to save the princess. Huh? <laughs> Kane? How could you get here? Princess, you know my name? Of course, you are the only one who looked into my eyes and not those wings. It's alright. Just quickly get out of here. <laughs> but the winds are too strong. How could we get down there? Huh? Don't worry. Close your eyes and drop your body down. When you escape from the strong winds, just open your wings. But I... Princess, do it quickly. We don't have much time. Where do you want to go? <sighs> you insolent. How dare you come here and take my pride away. Huh? <sighs> Princess, quickly run away. I will stop him. But I... I can't fly. At that moment, Princess showed him her fake wing. Turned out that many years ago, Duncan had kidnapped her. While Anita tried to run away, he had damaged one of her wings. Although she could escape, she was not able to use one of her wings forever. Princess Anita mm. will forever be mine! <laughs> At the most dangerous moment, he came up with an idea. Hmm? <laughs> Quick as a flash, Kane rushed there to tie a rope to a wing of Duncan. Princess, believe me! Then he held the princess and jumped out of the cliff. Seeing that, Duncan immediately chased after him. At that moment, the rope immediately worked and held Duncan off. Princess, when you get out of this cliff, just open your wings! Believe me! Right now! Although she didn't know what Kane wanted to do, she still followed his words. Flap your wings with me! After a while, they could finally understand each other, and together, they flew up as a normal wings. But it didn't last long. Duncan caught up with them. He consistently attacked the two of them. Members of royal family can use power! What is your magic? I can only make a person freeze for a while. That's enough! Kane started to think about the way to deceive Duncan. Princess, attack! The strike immediately made Duncan freeze. Taking advantage of this situation, Kane immediately tied him up, making him not able to use magic again. <laughs> Kane brought Anita back to the palace in the astonishment of everyone. From that moment, the princess didn't have to care about the gaze of everyone with her wings anymore. Because she found a perfect pair of wings for herself.